Hey everybody, let's have some more news. A villager arrested in alleged attack on ambulance staffer trying to treat patients. Orlando Health makes a push into the villages with a new medical pavilion. Villager who battled landlord arrested in theft of laptop computer. Outsiders feeling right at home at Airbnbs in the villages. UF Health The Villages Hospital gets a single star rating in government ranking. Unlicensed driver from Mexico arrested at 7-Eleven near Brownwood. A hole-in-one photo leads to the arrest of suspect in the death of an 87-year-old villager. Suspected shoplifter nabbed with sandwich and dental floss. Man who sexually abused a teen in Iowa registers address at Villa in the Villages. A motorcyclist wearing flip-flops arrested after cutting into traffic in Wildwood. This and more coming up. A villager has been arrested in an alleged attack on an ambulance staffer trying to treat a patient. The village's public safety department had been called Saturday night to a home in the village of El Cortez, according to the rush report from the Lady Lake Police Department. While the crew was treating a man deemed a critical patient, 68-year-old Kathleen Sillick began interfering with the crew's work. Sillick kept trying to gain entry to the ambulance through the side door, but the crew member kept shutting the door. She struck a crew member in the back with what felt to be a heavy closed hand. The ambulance crew member ordered Sillick, do not touch me again. She continued to walk toward him in an anger manner while pointing her finger at him. The report said the ambulance took the patient to U of Health, the village's hospital, and police were contacted about the incident. Officers went to Silic's home at 720 Cortez Avenue. I only touched him, the New Yorker native said. She was arrested on a felony charge of battery on an EMT. She was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $5,000 bond. I'm always perplexed why anybody would attack anybody trying to help somebody. Are you nuts? Orlando Health has opened its newest facility adjacent to the village's Brownwood community, expanding services for residents of Lake Sumter, Marion, and Lake County. A ribbon-cutting ceremony was held on Wednesday to celebrate the opening of the new medical pavilion. Orlando Health Medical Group, FHV Health, Brownwood, in attendance at the event were Wildwood Commissioner Joe Elliott and Sumter County Commissioner Jeff Bogue. The establishment of this advanced cardiac care facility signifies our long-standing commitment to excellence in medicine in our community, said Dr. David Liu, President of the FHV Health. Through state-of-the-art equipment, we are poised to provide world-class diagnostic treatments and preventative care that patients of Orlando Health and this community have come to know and expect. The facility includes a 10,000-square-foot building with 12 exam rooms, a procedure room, and five pre-post recovery rooms for patients. Orlando Health Medical Group FHV Health Brownwood offers a complete range of diagnostic and treatment capabilities, including primary care, cardiology, vascular surgery, CT, ultrasound, including stress echo, and diagnostics cath lab. The new facility is opening in phases. Physicians started seeing patients at that location in late June. The heart catheterization lab is set to open later this week, and patients are being scheduled for CT and ultrasound scans beginning in early August. <music> A villager who battled her landlord earlier this year in a bitter dispute had been arrested in the theft of a laptop computer. Carol Ward, 73, was in the headlights earlier this year for her fight with her landlord over the condition of her rented manufactured home at 1016 Aloha Way on the historic side of the villages. A Lake County Sheriff's deputy was called to the property Tuesday afternoon when Ward attempted to lodge a trespassing complaint on behalf of a hospitalized neighbor. A man who was at the neighboring property claimed he previously had been allowed to access the property. He said he had returned to reclaim his belongings, including a drone and a laptop computer. He accused Ward of stealing the items. She denied taking the items. The man said he had a GPS tracking device attached to his laptop. At that time, a witness approached the deputy and reported that Ward threw something in the water behind her rented manufactured home. Then she admitted she had taken the laptop. 
The New York native was arrested on a charge of grand theft. She was booked at the Lake County Jail and released on her own recognizance. Outsiders are feeling right at home at Airbnbs and the villages. These days, some of the hottest Airbnbs are found in the Sawgrass Grove area. And why not? For as little as $96 per night, you can rent a three-bedroom, two-bath home. That backs up to Clifton Cove Putting Course. You can walk right out the back door to McGrady's Pub and Sawgrass Grove Market and enjoy nightly entertainment. The home can accommodate up to five people. Is this a complaint or is this an advertisement? Airbnb renters have been raving about a new home in the Opal Villas in the village of Citrus Grove. It has two bedrooms, two baths, and the rental includes a four-seater golf cart. Check in for $90 per night at the Airbnb listing promises. You can also enjoy some of the other activities at the village, such as neighborhood and family pools, Brownwood Square, Edna's on the Green, golf, pickleball, and much more. The only golf that you can enjoy if you get a tee time would be the country clubs, because without a residence card... You can't play on any of the executive golf courses. Those are reserved for residents only and their guests. So you have to have that card. While outsiders are loving the village's lifestyle, full-time homeowners in the village's friendliest hometown are increasingly crying foul. They say the short-term weekend renters are allowed, violate parking protocols, and leave behind trash on non-collection days with birds tearing their bags open and feasting on the post-weekend leftovers. I can see that. Many residents are calling for action to restrict the short-term rentals and return the villages to the community feel that it once was attractive in the first place. Most of the retirement communities that I've been to, they limit the renting, if they allow it at all, they rent, limit the renting to a minimum of six months. That stops a lot of this kind of stuff. <music> U of Health, the Villages Hospital, has received a single star rating in a newly released government ranking. I'll tell you what, the Villages Hospital, for years now, has not ever received a very good rating up there at all. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services on Wednesday updated its overall hospital quality star ratings. The new ratings assigned one star to 248 hospitals across the United States. And we're one of them. The following hospitals in Florida received a one-star rating from CMS as designated by the Hospital Compare website. Jackson Health System in Miami, Stewart North Shore Medical Center, Miami, Bayfront Health, St. Petersburg, Manatee Memorial Hospital, Bradenton, Broward Health Medical Center, Fort Lauderdale, HCA Florida Highlands Hospital in Sebring, Larkin Hospital, Palm Springs Campus, Stewart Hialeah Hospital, Venice Regional Bayfront Health, Shore Point Health, Port Charlotte. I like Port Charlotte area. Uh, Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte, they kind of like across the river. Too bad it's on the coast. Shore Point Health, Port Charlotte, HCA Florida, JFK Hospital, Atlantis, UF Health, Leesburg Hospital. That's significant because the company that owns the Leesburg Hospital is also the same company that owns the Villages Hospital. And they both got a one-star rating. That tells me whoever's running these hospitals needs to get out. Oh, well, I don't know much about the ratings and how they work and all this and that, so I really shouldn't have an opinion, I guess. As an older person here, I just don't feel good about it, knowing if something happens to me, our local hospital has a one-star rating. What does that mean to me if I have a heart attack? I don't know. But I've got a lot of subscribers that are registered nurses. They would know, and they might uh, send me some emails, and if you do, I might sit down someday and cut a video and read them to you. <music> An unlicensed driver from Mexico was arrested at the 7-Eleven near Brownwood in the villages. Victor Alexis Perez Hernandez, 20, was driving a white 2004 Toyota SUV at about 10.30 p.m. Wednesday when he attempted to pull out of the 7-Eleven on Powell Road and County Road 44A and tried to drive around the Wild Hood Police <laughs> Officer's Patrol car, which was being used to block traffic during an accident investigation. <laughs> oh, son. I don't know how they do things in Mexico, but here, when a cop's blocking the road with the lights on, you're not allowed to go around him, okay? Perez Hernandez told the officer he had no licena and had left his Mexican passport at home. You can't drive a car with a passport either, man. I swear, I think the problem with the world, about all the problems that you see in here, I think it's education. People are just stupid, or maybe I shouldn't say stupid, are, uh, um naive illiterate they i don't know where they get their i don't know where they get their education anymore 
His identification was verified by a Mexican identification card found in the SUV. Do we know it was his? A computer check revealed that Perez Hernandez has never been issued a driver's license in the United States. He was arrested on a charge of driving without a license. His vehicle was towed from the scene. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center on a $1,000 bond. So illegal immigration is, got, is a problem. A hole-in-one photo led to the arrest of a suspect in the death of an 87-year-old villager. It's ironic that we talked about this on Port Sutton this Wednesday. I, I just glanced over this. I, I seen that name. And I was just thinking, man, that name sounds familiar. And then I told Sue uh, on Perch 7 we were talking about it, I said, I think this is the guy that I had on the news like a week ago or two weeks ago now with this, that he had a hole in one. And they took his picture and put it in there. And I think it's the same guy because they just looked alike. And then somebody that was watching Porch 7 sent us an uh, email or, or a text or whatever and said that it was. It's the same guy. Dean Zook and his wife had gone out to dinner that evening on June 28th at the Glenview Country Club when the front bumper of his white 2005 Toyota Avalon bumped the front bumper of a parked black 2010 Lexus RX 350. A man who believes his vehicle had been damaged was apparently enraged when he saw what had happened. What the hell? You hit my car, the man shouted at Zook. Zook asked to exchange insurance information, but the man responded by punching Zook in the jaw. Zook attempted to put up his hands to protect himself, but was unsuccessful due to the continuing punches being thrown by his assailant, who suddenly realized that the car that had been struck was not his, and walked away. Not even with an I'm sorry. I can tell you right now, somebody drank a little bit too much. A call was placed to 911, and Sumter County Sheriff's deputies found Zook and his wife in the parking lot. The village's public safety department also responded to the scene after Zook began slurring his words and stumbled. He was transported by ambulance to UF Health, the village's hospital, with a one-star rating. Hospital personnel discovered Zook had suffered a brain bleed, and he was flown by helicopter to UF Health Shands Medical Center in Gainesville. At the time he was unresponsive, he was placed on hospice care at Shands on July 15th and he died the following day due to the trauma he sustained from being punched he probably fell backwards and banged his head on the pavement or something the day after the incident the sheriff posted a surveillance images of the suspected assailant on social media the story was picked up by the villagesnews.com the Glenview surveillance showed the man entering the country club and pick up a to-go order. While he was walking through the restaurant he bumped into a server carrying drinks causing them to spill on a patron sitting at the bar did you tell him you were sorry? The release of the photos triggered a tip from someone who said he'd seen the assailant at Havana Country Club wearing similar clothes as he had been wearing at Glenview on the day of the attack. The tipster shot a photo of the man sitting at the table with several unknown females. The tipster said the man's name was Bob and sent the photo to the sheriff's office. A detective's Google search led to a photo of the village of Palo Ridge resident, Robert Moore, which had been published by the villagesnews.com in the photo. Moore was smiling in a celebration of a hole-in-one at Tarpon Boyle Executive Golf Course. Moore appeared to be wearing the same shoes, shorts, sunglasses as seen in the video surveillance from Glenwood Country Club. The detective also noted that the article indicated that the 75-year-old lives in the village of Palo Alto, which is close to proximity of the Glenwood Country Club. The detective discovered that Moore is the owner of a black 2022 Lexus RX350, a close match to the vehicle that was struck by Zook on that fateful evening at the country club. The Massachusetts native was arrested Thursday on a charge of aggravated manslaughter of an elderly person. He was booked after some kind of detention center and released after posting a $30,000 bond. This guy sounds like a real winner. A woman is being sought in the theft of merchandise from a Walmart store in the villages. The woman entered the store at Sarasota Plaza at about 7 p.m. July 21, loaded up her shopping cart, and left the store without paying for the items, according to the Sumter County Sheriff's Office. She left in a great two-door sedan. She was wearing a brown tank top, khaki shorts, and sandals. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Criminal Investigations Division at 352-793-2621 or to remain anonymous, contact Crime Line at 1-800-423-TIPS. That's 1-800-423-8477. Reference case number 4399. Seems like an awful lot of shoplifting going on right there at that Sarasota Walmart. It's just a small Walmart. 
A suspected shoplifter was nabbed with a sandwich and dental floss stolen from the public grocery store in the villages. He, he, at least he got dental floss. Ryan Bernie Leclerc, 42, who was homeless, went into the store at La Plaza Grande at about 1 p.m. Thursday and picked up a grab-and-go sandwich and package of dental floss, put them in his backpack, and walked out of the store without paying for them, according to the rest report. The theft was captured on the store's video surveillance system. He fled the store on his bicycle. An officer apprehended Leclerc at the village's golf cars. Located in the same shopping plaza, he still had the sandwich and dental floss in his backpack. The Vermont native, who served jail time after a 221 prowling incident at the villages of Cortez and was arrested with fentanyl in 2022 at Spanish Springs Town Square, was taken into custody on a charge of theft. He was booked at the Lake County Jail on a $500 bond. Should be $5,000 bond. This is his third arrest. Third arrest. A man convicted of sexually abusing a 14-year-old girl in Iowa has registered an address at a villa in the villages. John Thomas Ryan, 43, this past week registered a permanent address at 1791 Huckleberry Street in the Hortensia Villas in the village of St. Charles, according to Florida Department of Law Enforcement. In 2000, in Clinton, Iowa, Ryan was convicted of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. Ryan was 19 at the time the crime was committed, according to the Iowa records. Ryan stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighs 275 pounds, according to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. He did not register a vehicle. I bet the people in St. Charles are glad to hear about it. A villager's son's trip to a rehab has paid off with a dismissal of drug charges he had been facing. The prosecutor's office filed a notice in Septicana Court earlier this month indicating that further prosecution is not warranted in the case of 23-year-old Jake Thomas Bledsoe, who has been residing with his mother in the village of Hawkins. You know, this is like the third kid in the village of Hawkins over there. Last week, we had the kid that was arrested twice, remember? For actually, it, since May, he'd been arrested three times: hit and run, drunk, and drunk. And before him, there was another one I think lived over. Am I correct? The kid that stole all the camera gear and things out of our rec centers. Didn't he live in Hawkins too? I could be wrong about that. And then this kid. When's it going to stop, parents? When's it going to stop? I wonder. Is the kids this a problem, or is it the parents this a problem? Are you so afraid to live alone and let your child go? He had been facing a slew of drug charges after arrest last year in the villages. As a result of those arrests, a Sumter County judge ordered Bledsoe's mother to drive her son directly to the Believe Treatment Center in Palm Beach Gardens. The judge specified that the pair would be permitted to stop for gasoline, but there shall be no stops for shopping, leisure, etc. In other words, straight there, straight back. Apparently, treatment worked, and the prosecutor's office has opted to drop the charges against Bledsoe. Well, we'll see. He was arrested three times last year. The North Carolina native was arrested June 2, 2022, when he was found with 124 grams of marijuana at the breezeway of Publix at Lake Deaton Plaza. A deputy asked Bledsoe for his name. He repeatedly said he wanted a lawyer and would not provide his name. When he was identified, uh, the deputy learned that Bledsoe was free on a bond after a pair of arrests earlier that year. So that makes three arrests right there. Bledsoe has been arrested on March 11, 2022, when he was found in a car at a Brownwood restaurant. A search of the vehicle turned up 9.32 pounds of marijuana, a black digital scale, a bag containing solid mushrooms, oxycodone, hydrochloride, and other pills. That's four arrests. While he was free on bond on that arrest, Bledsoe was arrested in connection with an earlier event in which he was caught on surveillance at the Wildwood Smoke Shop, allegedly stealing two marijuana grinders and a multicolored torchlight. It's five arrests. How many times do you arrest somebody for being stupid? You know, you can't say he didn't know. A motorcyclist wearing flip-flops was arrested after cutting into traffic in Wildwood. <laughs> I gotta tell you. I got to tell you, I'm a, I'm a long time bike rider, my wife and I, and we, we enjoyed it. We used to ride with groups of other bikers. I take it serious. I take my safety serious. And more than anything, I take my passenger back there, her safety, really serious. And I hear, see these guys riding around with no helmet. How can you respect that? Seriously, how can you respect that when he doesn't even respect himself? 
And this guy running around with flip-flops. And I've seen him running around with shorts and things on. Just think about this. Somebody does something stupid. Let's say the biker is totally 100% correct. He's done nothing wrong except what he's wearing. He has to lay the bike down. And he has flip-flops, shorts, and no helmet. And short sleeve shirts. Just think about the road rush here, if nothing else. I, I just didn't have any respect for these kind of guys. I would never ride with these guys. I just politely say, no, thank you. Uh, we're busy this weekend. Brett Allen Vogel, 34, is riding the motorcycle with a female passenger at 5.30 p.m. First of all, if that had been my daughter or anything, they wouldn't be getting on that bike with you at all. And if they did, they would know it'd be with my disapproval, and they would know why, and you would know why. Saturday on US 301, when he cut into traffic, according to the arrest report from the Wildwood Police Department, Vogel stopped at a red light, but had a difficult time holding the motorcycle in an upright position. So they're all heavy. We're talking 600, 700 pounds, roughly. Uh, pretty much not including my weight or my wife's weight back there, or the luggage we may have in our side boxes. They're a heavy bike. So you got to take them serious. A police officer noticed that the motorcycle's license plate had expired in December and initiated a traffic stop at the Sable Lot parking lot. Bogle admitted he didn't have a driver's license or any insurance information on the motorcycle. So now he's got no license, no insurance. God help you if he hits you. A complete disregard for public safety. A computer check revealed that Vogel has been classified as a habitual offender. He's done this many times before. Vogel was arrested on a felony charge of driving while license suspended. He was booked at the Suffolk County Detention Center and released after posting a $5,000 bond. That's nothing. I would make him stand in a corner and put his nose in a little circle. Make him stand there for an hour. That's what I would do. <laughs> Remember that from school? Oh, uh, I could tell you stories. <laughs> I wasn't a good kid when I was little. I just, I always got in trouble. So I'm not too hard on these guys. Only when safety's involved. He doesn't care about that girl. She may be head over heels for him. She may look at him and go like, this is going to make a great father for my children. And I'm saying, this guy don't care about you. The billboards on US Highway 27 and 441 after many years pointed motorists toward shops, retail, restaurants, and entertainment available at Spanish Springs. However, the developer has elected to get rid of the billboards and instead place monument signs at the Main Street entrance off US Highway 27 and 441 to Spanish Springs. Two monument signs are planned at the entrance to Spanish Springs. Renderings show that monument signs are in keeping with the architecture of Spanish Springs, but they certainly will not have the height and the visibility of the billboards. Is it another sign of developers losing interest in the village's original town square? Longtime residents are already suspicious of the developer who is bringing in apartments in Spanish Springs and in 2019 cut back the traditional two-hour happy hour. When Katie Bell's closed during COVID-19, residents were hurt at the loss of the club, which had for many years created so many happy memories. Katie Bell's is something that uh, people that's been here a long while is never going to forgive the developer for getting rid of. Never. Harold started it for a good reason. And these people got rid of it all because of profits, greed, and money. A villager will lose her driver's license after a golf cart drunk driving arrest at a town square. Carol Ann Carlson Lineweaver, 66, who lives in the village of Caroline, pleaded no contest last week in subject County court to a charge of driving under the influence. She will lose her license for six months, has been placed on probation for one year, and was ordered to perform 80 hours of community service. Lineweaver was walking at Lake Sumter Landing Market Square at about 11.30 p.m. April 20th when she was spotted by a Sumter County Sheriff's deputy. Her speech was slurred and she was having trouble maintaining her balance, according to the arrest report. The deputy advised Lineweaver not to try to drive home. She said she would contact someone to pick her up along with her golf cart. A short time later, the deputy saw Lineweaver walking by with a set of keys and an insulated koozie in her hands. She got into a red golf cart and placed the keys in ignition. She put the golf cart in reverse, but was immediately stopped by the deputy. Lineweaver struggled through field sobriety exercises and clearly was exasperated after attempting a one-legged stand. You know, I'm not sure at my age I could do a one-legged stand. You'd have to be a freaking gymnast to do this, she told the deputy. She provided breast samples that registered 0.201 and 0.214 blood alcohol content. 
An unlicensed driver from Mexico was arrested again when he was caught behind the wheel. Nicolas Hernandez Ruiz, 46 of Dade City, was driving a white Chrysler Town & Country van at about 5.30 a.m. Thursday on U.S. Highway 301 in Bushdale when a Septic County Sheriff's deputy noticed the van's tag light was not properly illuminated at the license plate. During a traffic stop, Hernandez Ruiz indicated he only speaks Spanish and admitted he does not have a driver's license. During a traffic stop, Hernandez Ruiz indicated he only speaks Oh, A computer check revealed he had been convicted in 2021 in Palm Beach County for driving without a license. He was arrested on a charge of driving without a license at Book at the Septic County Detention Center and released after posting a $500 bond. Second time, 50 bucks out of his pocket. That's it. To a letter to the editor. See what they're talking about. To the editor, we have been living full-time in the villages going on nine years, and there has been no meaningful improvement to the village's hospital situation. No, there hasn't. We are now a community of almost 150,000 residents. Just exactly how long is it going to take to get a first world hospital? If I wanted a one-star care, I would have retired to Mexico. That's sent in by Damien Walther, the village of Dunedin. Well, Damien, hang on. Mexico will be here shortly. To the editor, day-to-day, -day, Airbnbs and short-term rentals are a business. In the villages, homeowners are not supposed to conduct a business from their home. Isn't that a part of the covenants? Isn't that why we have hotels? Just saying. That's sent in by Sandra Fuller from the village of Glenbrook. Well, Sandra, that's true and not true. They're talking about you can't have a business like in your garage. You can't open up a clothing shop where you got customers driving their car in and out, in and out all day long. That's what they're keying on. To the editor, in reviewing the recent rankings of Florida hospitals, UF Health, the Villages Hospital, is ranked the lowest with one star by CMS. The same rating applies to UF Health Leesburg Hospital. It is disturbing and reprehensible that with a community as large as ours, there is no decent health care available here. I believe Heather Long is the current CEO of the Villages Hospital. What is she doing to bring the Villages Hospital ratings up? This ranking is not surprising, and it's not the first time I've heard about a one star. My husband and I would never consider going there for our care unless we were in dire emergency. The POA has continually put the spotlight on this ranking, and there have been several meetings about it. Apparently, Heather Long has no positive results to show us. Why? That's sent in by Joanne Statillo McClenney at Fernandina. I have no idea, Joanne, but the Village's Hospital has been a problem for the almost uh, nine years that I've been here full-time. I've never heard anything really very good about the Village's Hospital's emergency care. Hospital, I don't know. I went up there once for some tests that my doctor wanted to run, and I can only tell you that when I went through the hospital, everything looked fine to me, and the doctors there that uh, did the tests on me, I was there for like three or four hours, Everything was professional, everything was clean, everything seemed up to snuff and good enough. So I don't know about the hospital itself, I just know emergency rooms has always had problems, especially during snowbird season, and now they got this one-star rating, which they've had it before, and it's not getting any better, and I don't have no answer for you at all. I'd like to have some answers myself, so thanks for the letter, I appreciate it. Maybe we'll hear something. How many holes and ones did we get this week in uh, villages? Looks like we only got one. Richard Lloyd of the village of Glenbrook got the lucky ace at the El Santiago Executive Golf Course. Way to go, Richard. Congratulations on your hole in one. Well, I think that's going to do it for the news this week. I appreciate everybody watching the news. I appreciate everybody that subscribed. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. I know you don't like hearing it all the time, bored, but I'm going to keep drumming it in your head. And I'll see you guys next uh, Monday for a video. I'll see you next Wednesday for Port Sutton and next Friday for the news. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends about my channel. Share my videos so I can get more subscribers. Share it on your social media. Don't leave your keys in the golf cart.